Hey everybody and Happy New Year! Scary Specs here, welcoming you back to Destiny 2 and our comprehensive beginner's guide. Today we're talking about gearing up. Before we get started, I just wanted to preface this video by letting you know that I'll be making a lot of references at the beginning and middle of the video, which I'll explain and provide a lot of context for towards the end. So if you want to get the most benefit for your character, make sure to watch the video all the way to the end. So as you can see here, I've got my Titan and my Warlock. My Warlock's really my main, but for the purposes of this video, I've created a Hunter that's got a pretty laughable light level. And over on the right hand side here, you'll see something that looks very familiar. If you click on this, it gives you the opportunity to buy yourself a pack of 900 level gear to open up endgame for that character. Now, you'll have to spend some money doing this, so you need to buy some silver if that's something that you're into, which you can do there. And then the equivalent of $20, which is 2,000 silver, which is actually quite expensive, is what this will cost you. Now, if you're made of money and you don't mind supporting the game and you don't have any time, then this is not a bad option. The gear will be replaced quickly and honestly, I would avoid doing this if you have a main. And even if you don't, it's very easy to get gear, which I'll explain. As you already know, if you've seen my previous videos, I focus on efficiency because I don't have a lot of time and I want to make sure that the time that I do spend in Destiny 2 is rewarded as much as possible. That means joining a clan. I'll explain a little bit later. Now, you do want to get your banner because the banner will help later on when you have more people in the clan and you can join or create a clan by downloading the Destiny 2 companion app on your phone, which is pretty cool. Although I do wish that they included some of these features in the actual game itself. The benefit of the banner is pretty cool, but you do also have these bounties that you can complete with your clan mates. And you do get really cool rewards from these as well, which includes legendary gear, which will be higher in level than the average gear level that you have currently equipped, which means that if you're above the level of 900, you're still able to continue to get better quality gear as you level up and continue to do these bounties. The best part though comes in the weekly bonuses that you get. So if at least half your fire team is made up of your clan members, you can get a really good piece of gear for completing with them a crucible match, a gambit match, a raid, and a nightfall. That's four extra pieces of gear weekly that you wouldn't have had otherwise. Now this next part is for people that already have a main, but if you don't have a main, make sure to pay attention because you'll still be able to use this strategy once you do formulate a good main character and you're ready to start an alt, whether that's because you want to be more efficient uh, by gathering resources and gear that is then shared in the vault with all of your characters, or whether you're just getting kind of bored of the game and the grind and you're looking for a different playstyle. The vault is really, really important and it's honestly quite understated uh, with regards to how important it is. Most people don't understand how to use it efficiently. So I'm going to go through that with you now. now think about it like this. When you're going through a dungeon or a raid or maybe just a crucible match, when you get pieces of gear to drop, whether that's actually gear or weapons, you're getting them to drop based on the item level that you currently have. The game looks at everything that you have equipped and says, okay, he's around the 862 mark, so we're gonna give him something that's 863 or 864. Well, what if you could give yourself three guns from one of your main characters that would make your item level instead of 860 something into 940 or 950? Well, guess what? Now, suddenly, you're getting that loot to drop at a much higher item level. Not only are you making yourself more powerful and able to clear content faster, again, being more efficient, but now you're also getting gear to drop at a level that's much higher than before, meaning that you're getting that much closer to getting to the soft cap uh, before you have to actually go into raid mode. Now, I said soft cap. I, I kind of mean hard cap um, because the, the soft cap is 900, really. That's what opens up the, uh, the end game content for you. The hard cap I would say is 960 because as soon as I started getting into that area with my Warlock, I was not getting any gear from regular or even weekly challenges uh, to drop that was higher than 960. So 960 is really the cap and then at that point you're really just um, getting boosted by your seasonal artifact. But the vault is really a great opportunity to boost up one of your alts because you can leave some weapons that are not quite ideal for your main and you can use those weapons on your alt, if, and if nothing, then just for the light value itself to boost your character up to a much higher level. So check this out. We're going to equip these three weapons and look at the difference in light level. That is insane. So now, instead of having gear drop in the high 700s, we'll be getting gear dropping in the mid 800s. The amount of time that that's saved of all the gear that you would have to have drop and in increments of one to two light levels over doing different kinds of activities over the course of a week or two, you've now catapulted yourself to a new level 
where you're getting much higher quality gear dropping and you're getting that much closer to the cap. I really can't get enough of this vault. It's really awesome. And again, its importance is really understated. There's so much that you can do and most people don't really understand how it works. Now, if your character hasn't hit light level 900 yet, then this will look very similar. We're checking out all the planets now and honestly, everything looks pretty bare bones. There's not a whole lot going on here and there's a good reason for that. The reason is because you've not unlocked the end game yet. You can do so by finally hitting light level 900, which is not difficult to do. You can just go ahead and continue to do things like vanguard strikes, crucible matches, and gambit matches, as well as completing lost sectors, public events, and really anything else that you can put your mind to. As you can see here, at the bottom of these, we don't see any weekly challenges. Those weekly challenges unlock when you unlock the rest of the endgame, when you hit level 900 on your character. And that really is going to be your key to get really good and high level gear for your character. And you won't really be able to do that after light level 900 without those weekly challenges. It'll be very, very slow. So as you can see here, we do have some challenges available at the tower, but these are weekly challenges that you can complete before you are light level 900 for completing bounties with their respective NPCs. That being said, I would really recommend that you do all of your bounties every day and collect those weekly bonuses to increase the progress rate of your character. Another great way to increase the progress of your character is by using engrams. My personal favorite, since I really like PvE, is by running strikes, but you can literally do anything you want. There's Gambit, there's Crucible, there's also just getting regular telemetry bounties from Banshee, and I mean, why not? Just get all of those before you do the event of your choice, and then you'll be completing tons of bounties all at the same time. Again, we're coming back to that efficiency. By the way, if you've not seen my video on strikes yet, I would recommend you check that out. It'll be appearing on the top right-hand corner of your screen right now. Now, we're going to collect these bounties because the more of these we hand in, the more we'll be able to hand in to Zavala in exchange for those engrams. The engrams will give you either a weapon or a piece of gear, and they will be consistently better than the items that you currently have equipped, which means that by continuing to run strikes or anything else that you like, you'll constantly be getting better and better gear which will get you up to that hard cap that much faster. If you're like me and you really enjoy PvE, then you're going to love Nightfall. Personally, this was the way that I got my Warlock from 900 to 971. And honestly, if you like PvE, I think you'll enjoy it too, for a couple of really good reasons. First of all, the Nightfall is one of the only events that has two weekly challenges attached to it. The first is getting 100,000 points in any given Nightfall and the second is completing five of them. And the higher difficulty you choose, the faster you can complete that. So for example, if you do the level 750 difficulty, you will need to complete five of them to get the weekly challenge and get the powerful gear. But if you do the 920 level version, then that counts as two completions each time you do it, meaning you only need to do three. I'm not sure how it scales up beyond this, but it's honestly a really good way to be efficient seems to be a, a topic here and also to get really powerful gear which can be several light levels above the average gear that you currently have equipped okay so finally we've got our hunter here we're going to put on our last piece of gear and we are now at 905 so we're ready to start end game we're ready to start crushing those weekly challenges and getting up to that 960 hard cap so we can start raiding so the best way to do that is like i said before doing all those weekly challenges. And the beautiful thing about that is that you don't have to worry about doing a particular kind of challenge over another. You just do what you like to do. So once we look at the map here, you can see that we have tons of these yellow orbs everywhere, right beside all of the different planets. We'll start here with Mercury. And as you can see here, we've unlocked the Sundial, which is the Season of Dawn special event. We'll go over that in a future video, but this, this thing, oh man, you can get so much good gear from here. It's not even funny. This will get its own video, and that's probably going to be next week, so stay tuned for that. As you look over on the rest of the map here, you can see that down in the Vanguard section, we now have additional uh, available uh, challenges here. So we've got this one for uh, doing the Elemental Burn challenge. So that's whatever the Elemental Burn is currently, which if you click on that and go to the bottom left-hand corner of your screen, it'll tell you what that burn is. If you use the same subclass as that and run three strikes, there's your powerful gear there. These are the two uh, challenges that I talked about before uh, for the Nightfall. So you've got the one for completion and the other one for 100,000 points. The one for 100,000 points, don't kill yourself if you can't get that right away. 
It can be difficult to do, especially if you're just starting out, but it's a great way to get really good quality gear. And speaking of which, um, you can see here in Gambit. Uh, Gambit, I don't know why, man, but Gambit's got some of the best gear available. You get tier 2 gear from completing uh, the Gambit challenge for the week. Um, and you also get something from Gambit Prime as well. Um, Gambit Prime is honestly not really my thing, but again, that's the great thing about Destiny. There's just so much available. And speaking of that, there's also even more available in the Crucible. If you'll pay close attention, you'll notice that there are actually two different kinds of challenges that you can complete. One is for the rotator modes, and the second is for the core modes. If those weren't self-explanatory enough, let me elaborate. So the core modes are the ones like Control and Clash. They're there all the time, you can play them whenever you want. And the rotator modes are the rotating modes that rotate throughout the week. So for each week, you get different modes, and you'll be able to complete those to get that additional powerful gear as well. Your last set of challenges are going to be found on the moon, but in order to unlock those, you'll need to complete the entire Shadowkeep campaign. You can do that by clicking on the moon here, and you'll see your first mission, A Mysterious Disturbance, will take you there. You'll go through the first, you know, probably about 15-20 minutes completing that mission, and you'll need to complete each and every other mission after that. But once you've done that and completed the campaign, you'll unlock these repeatable missions, which will change from week to week, which will have weekly challenges, as well as these Nightmare Haunts, which have completion challenges for the week, but also challenges for completing heightened difficulty levels, and man, these things are tough. So as you're getting your gear and working through the 920, 930, 940, and higher power levels, you'll be able to complete these and get that sweet, sweet pinnacle gear. Thank you, as always, so much for watching. If you liked the video and it helped you out even just a little bit, make sure to hit the like button to let me know. Do subscribe if you're new around here and ring that bell so that you never miss a video in the future. I'll see you in Destiny 2 and in the next video.